In Canto 4, Dante claims that he uh, fellowship with the great poets. He comes into Canto 5 and he has to confront the responsibilities of writing, the responsibilities of being a writer. Uh, and he encounters his own, a reader of his own. Dante merges into Canto 26 and meets none other than Ulysses, the master rhetorician, whose experience and whose journey will lead himself and his uh, companions to a tragic end. For Dante, this is a, an extraordinary moment for a number of reasons. Ulysses is a steady point of reference for his own adventure. Uh, he will keep thinking of him in Canto 19 of Purgatorio and in Canto 28 of Paradise, when Dante is about to live beyond the whole the, the physical universe. He looks back to see the distance he has traveled, and the only thing that he sees is really that passageway where Ulysses violated all boundaries. Clearly, what kind of boundaries am I violating? Ulysses is a mode of being, a possibility of being for Dante himself. Dante begins with Ulysses' who has returned to Ithaca and starts his journeys of exploration all over again. The idea of the eternal return, the idea of a closure that he has come back home is no, not part of Dante's imagination or sensibility. He is, he is the poet who is truly restless and always placing himself and his heroes on some kind of quest, on a method, on a road, on an address, whatever, whatever the, the, the idea, uh, the philosophers were always on the road, always in thinking about some, some, some way of reaching wisdom, reaching truth. That's where he puts them. And that's what happens with the story of, uh, of, of Ulysses. Ulysses uh, starts all over again and goes and die, to die. He's involved in a journey that is absolutely gratuitous, a journey for wisdom. A journey for wisdom into the unpeopled world. We're going to see this in a moment, and and dies. That's 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 it. From one point of view, and I want you to be careful as you read the canto because you will see, uh, you will notice one thing. The first thing you will notice is it's not Dante who conducts the interview with Ulysses. No, it is Virgil, the poet of Latin antiquity. And supposedly they speak maybe Greek or some form of uh, clearly Greek. Um, uh, it is Virgil, the poet of the Aeneid, who thinks of himself as the fitting interlocutor of the great Greek hero. Not Dante. Dante is excluded. Dante just watches and witnesses this. But there is more to this idea of stylistic decorum, because one can say, well, Virgil, this is in fact tr as tragic as a text can ever get, sublime. This is not a comical text. This is Virgil, the author of a tragedy. That's what Dante calls it, the tragic style, the sublime style. And Ulysses speaks in the most, in the loftiest way possible. But it's not just a question of stylistic decorum. At stake, there is something else. Ulysses disguises himself as Aeneas, as, and tells the story of his life as if he were uh, Aeneas. Now, let me just tell you one little thing, and then we get into the canto. Uh, and, and this is part of the story in many ways. If you ask readers of Virgil and Homer, they probably will tell you, well, Virgil, yeah, a good poet, a vet, but you know, let's face it, the first six books are just the Odyssey, and the second books are just the Iliad that he sort of gives a, a resume of, and so on. Not at all, not at all. And the difference between the two heroes is this. Ulysses is a place to go back to. He goes from Ithaca to Troy, back to Ithaca. Aeneas has no place to go to. His is the open quest, the, open, the, the road on open-ended road and open-ended journey. And this is the way Ulysses will think of himself. The, third, the last thing, and then uh, really we'll uh, get into the canto. The last thing I'll say is that the extraordinary ambiguity, I want to point out, the extraordinary amb ambiguity with which Dante represents Ulysses. But the ambiguity of Ulysses is part of the story of Ulysses from the start. 
the very, from the very beginning, Ulysses is a philosopher and he's a rhetorician. He's someone who can manipulate all knowledge for his own ends. And this is this, this ambiguity that in many ways Dante is, uh, finds very alluring.